March 1, 2003. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, is founded within the Department of Homeland Security, which opened its doors the same day to unify our national security efforts in the wake of the nation's deadliest terror attacks. With operations beginning less than 20 years ago, it may appear to some that ICE is a young agency in a new department. History, however, tells a different story. The functional history of ICE is rooted in our country's earliest days. In 1787, a series of anonymously authored essays known as the Federalist Papers were published throughout the newly formed United States of America. Through these essays, Alexander Hamilton and fellow founding fathers, James Madison and John Jay, presented a vision of government for our emerging nation. Facing significant debt from the Revolutionary War and no incoming revenue, Hamilton argued that taxing imports would help sustain our nation's growth, prosperity, and defense. To support this, the Tariff Act of 1789 was passed. Later that year, the U.S. Treasury Department was established to oversee the collection and distribution of this money. Leading the new administration was Alexander Hamilton, our nation's first Secretary of the Treasury. Throughout our history, revenue collection responsibility remained with the U.S. Treasury under a succession of leaders, including the Comptroller, the Division of Customs Chief, the Bureau of Customs Commissioner, and eventually the U.S. Customs Service Commissioner, where it remained for 30 years until the Homeland Security Department was created. As the United States grew, the framework of customs administration took on greater enforcement responsibility. With stations dotted along many of our national borders, the U.S. Customs Service was uniquely suited to manage regulations related to importation, border traffic, and immigration. In the decades following our independence, the U.S. encouraged a relatively open immigration policy and the influx of new citizens came at a manageable pace. But starting in the late 1800s, coinciding with the railroad boom and the second industrial revolution, there was a sharp increase in the demand for affordable labor. Newly acquired territories invited significant westward migration. Across the ocean, a mix of war, religious and political oppression, collapsing economies and famine fueled a wave of people coming to America in search of the economic and educational opportunities that later formed the core of the American dream. This influx of people put pressure on Congress to regulate the immigration process, leading to some of the first laws to combat human trafficking, child exploitation, and forced labor. The nation also began collecting additional revenue by placing a 50 cent head tax on each newly arriving immigrant, creating another revenue stream for the country. Through the latter half of the 1800s, the U.S. Customs Service was responsible for administering new and increasingly complex immigration laws. A distinct agency was needed to handle this important work. This would become the Bureau of Immigration within the Department of Commerce and Labor, allowing the Customs Service to focus on border security and preventing the importation of potentially dangerous goods from abroad. When alcohol prohibition went into effect in the year 1920, the production, sale, and importation of alcoholic beverages became illegal in the United States. While the prohibition unit within the Bureau of Internal Revenue was responsible for enforcing the federal ban on domestic production and sale of alcohol, the task of seizing alcohol imported from abroad fell to the U.S. Customs Service. Despite these new bureaucracies and restrictions, American growth was unparalleled for the next 50 years. From 1892 to 1954, more than 12 million immigrants entered the United States through New York City's Ellis Island. Customs and immigration authorities, including administrative, legal, and enforcement functions, all worked together to secure our borders and strengthen our economy throughout the 20th century. Then, in the early hours of a clear blue late summer morning, the entire world appeared to stop. It was September 11th, 2001. 
19 men boarded four commercial airliners and carried out a coordinated series of savage attacks on the United States of America. In the weeks and months to follow, a key part of our national response was to create the Department of Homeland Security and, within that department, ICE. Our efforts focus on dismantling transnational criminal organizations, preventing human trafficking and drug smuggling, battling cybercrime, rescuing victims of child predators and human traffickers, protecting intellectual property rights, and removing criminal aliens. We arrest and remove those who are illegally present in the country, including those who have ignored a judge's final order of removal and committed additional crimes. We work to strengthen the integrity of our entire immigration system, and our attorneys play a vital role in removal cases, including those against criminal aliens, terrorists, and human rights abusers. If that sounds like more than just collecting tariffs and enforcing immigration laws, well, it is. After combining the customs and immigration responsibilities that evolved over time, you get ICE, protecting the nation's interests at home and abroad. ICE enforces nearly 450 criminal statutes and employs more than 20,000 people throughout the United States and in dozens of foreign countries. On an average day, ICE agents and officers make hundreds of criminal and civil arrests seize millions in illegal currency, rescue victims of child predators and human traffickers, while also blocking thousands of malware attackers, seizing tons of illegal narcotics, and initiating investigations into sensitive technology theft. History shows the connections between those who came before us and the men and women who compose today's U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement workforce are clear. The Customs Service was created to guarantee revenue collected by our nation was used to help it grow and keep it safe. The Immigration and Naturalization Service was created to ensure people coming to the U.S. were arriving lawfully and determined to help our growing nation prosper and thrive. More than 200 years later, that's precisely what the men and women of ICE are continuing to do.